What's up, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com, and today we're talking carbon blade steel, 1095 to be exact. But before we get started, if you like this video, be sure to smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and ring that notification bell so you will know when we drop new videos. Trust me, you'll want to know. And join us in the comments down below. We do read them. Now that that's out of the way, let's light it up. Now, there are a ton of different knife steels that manufacturers have uh, chosen from, and each one has its pros and cons, what it does well and not so well. One of the mainstays in blade steel throughout the years has been 1095 carbon steel. To start with, this steel, and to realize its merits, we need to first look at its chemical makeup. Now, unlike more modern patented steels, the recipe, if you will, for 1095 is not exact, and it can vary slightly from one manufacturer to another. To begin with, you have the iron foundation that is the beginning of any steel. Then there's the carbon content that for... 1095 can range anywhere from 0.9% to 1.03%, and it's it's interesting to note that carbon steel has been made for a really long time. Like I stated in our video on uh, Damascus, hundreds of years ago, organic materials such as uh, plant life and coal was used in the forging process to uh, obtain the element of carbon desired in the steel. Now, to be called carbon steel, the American Iron and Steel Institute states that it cannot contain more than 1.65% manganese, 0.6% silicon, or 0.6% copper, and it must not require a minimum amount of any of the other elements that we typically find in blade steels. Now, they actually state that the formula cannot specify any mandatory content other than iron and carbon. Now, the 1095 designation comes from the SAE International Numerical System of Steel. Um, this, uh, in this, the first two digits represent the main element or elements added uh, to the iron to produce that particular steel. The last two digits are going to represent the percentage added. So in the case of 1095, one identifies it as carbon steel, and zero indicates that there is no secondary element added to the alloy. And the 95 represents its carbon content, and 1095 carries the limitation that its carbon content should not exceed about 1%. Um, so 1095 also includes 0.35% uh, to 0.5% manganese. <clears throat> Now, carbon steel has been made since about 500 AD with some very mysterious properties in ancient times and becoming more scientifically specific in more modern times. Now, 1095 has been used in knives and by the military for the last 100 years, and it's still popular as a knife steel because of its hardness, its ease of sharpening, and its affordability to produce. Its biggest drawback is its lack of corrosion resistance, but that's um, not really a problem if you take care of your blades. It will corrode easily if not maintained and properly stored, and as a result, many companies coat their blades to avoid that issue. Um, it also can be brittle if used on a thinner blade, which is why it is utilized in many bushcrafting knives with a thicker, more convex-type grind making a very hard blade that sharpens easily and holds a razor-sharp edge very well, much like this SEJG5. Now, uh, this is the same knife uh, that you saw in our Will It Cut series, the first episode of that Will It Cut series. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful knife. Uh, it is 1095 carbon steel, holds up very well. It does have a finish on it um, that is going to help protect the blade some, but again, like I said, as long as you take care of it, it's still going to be great. Um, it, it works fantastically, and it's great for bushcrafting knives because, like I said before, it's so tough. It, it takes an edge really well. It holds an edge pretty well, and it's super easy to sharpen and touch up. Proponents many times will tout that the edge can even be touched up in the field on a smooth river stone if you really need to and, and you're desperate for it, and it will absolutely take a good beating. Uh, we proved that in that Will It Cut series. So is it a good steel? Absolutely. Is it good for you? I don't know. I don't know what you'll be doing with it. 
I don't know if you take care of your knives. Will it cut? Yeah. Like I said, we proved that. <laughs> we proved that in our Will It Cut series. If used and cared for properly, it will do its job, and it will last a very, very long time. That's all for me. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I'm TC with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com. And remember, if it cuts, we carry it. <laughs>